Okay, we're still talking about simple quadratic equations, and these are equations that can be solved by taking a square root of each side, and this is example number three. So the idea here is to do a little bit of algebra to take the thing that is squared and isolate it, and then you can get rid of the square by taking a square root. So in this case, I have x plus three. That's the thing that is squared, so I need to isolate the x plus three. So I do that by dividing by two. And of course, if I divide by two on one side, I divide by two on the other. So here, the twos cancel out. And so on the left, I get x plus three squared. The two's gone. And on the right, I have 50 divided by two, which is 25. Now that the thing that is squared has been isolated, I can take the square root of each side. So I take the square root of the left and the square root of the right. And on the left, if I have x plus 3 squared and then square rooted, that just gives me x plus 3. The square and the square root undo each other. So I just have x plus 3 on the left side. And on the right, I have the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. And now I can subtract 3 from both sides to solve for x. And so I have x is equal to plus or minus 5 minus 3. So that's going to be 5 minus 3 or negative 5 minus 3. So x is going to be 5 minus 3 which is 2 or it's going to be negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. Okay, I'm going to check these again. Okay, I'm going to check 2. To check this solution, I'm just going to take this 2 and plug it back into my original equation. The original equation is what's, what's written up here in white. 2 times x plus 3 squared equals 50. I'm just going to take that equation and rewrite it, but instead of the x right there, I'm going to put in a value of 2. So this is going to be 2 times 2 plus 3 squared, and that should equal 50. If this solution is correct, this statement will be true. So 2 times 5 squared is 50, and 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. You can see that that works. Okay, let's check this solution also, the negative 8. So check negative 8. So again, I'm going to rewrite my original problem, but instead of the x right there, I'm going to put in this value of negative 8. So I'm going to write 2 times negative 8 plus 3 squared. That should equal 50. So 2 times, let's see, negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. That is squared. That should be 50. Negative 5 squared is 25, so this is 2 times 25. And yeah, that equals 50, so that works also. Those are my two answers, 2 and negative 8. And they both check out. Okay, here's another example. Sometimes there's no solution, and that turns out to be the case here. All right, our technique here is to take the thing that is squared, in this case the x plus 8 is squared, and we want to isolate that. So we want to isolate the squared thing so that we can take a square root to get rid of the squared. So what do I do here? Well, first I need to subtract 12 from each side. And that leaves me with 4 times x plus 8 squared equals 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. And then I can divide each side by 4. And here the 4's cancel out, and I'm left with x plus 8 squared equals negative 2. And if I try to square root both sides, I get a problem. Square root the left and square root the right. Well, square root the left, I just get x plus 8, because this square root and the squared cancel each other out. So I have x plus 8 equals the square root of negative 2, and I can't do that. I can't do the square root of a negative number, not yet at least. There is no number that squared will give me negative 2, no real number at least. 
So I've reached a point where I have a negative square root or something squared equals a negative number. And in that case, I don't have any real number answers. So I would write no solution. Or if you want to, to, to really be correct, you wouldn't just write no solution. You would write no real solution. Because it turns out, we will learn later, there are other numbers besides what we call the real numbers. There are complex numbers. And it is possible to find a complex number solution. But that's an Algebra 2 topic. We won't go into that here. But there is, from, from, a, from our standpoint, of dealing with the real numbers, all the numbers on the real number line, there's no solution in this case. And sometimes we have a single solution, like we have here. x minus 3 squared equals 0. We can just immediately take the square root of each side, and that gives us x minus 3 equals 0. And then this is trivial. Just add 3 to each side, and you get x equals 3. There's no plus or minus here. If there was a plus or minus, it would show up right here. Plus or minus 0. And then you add 3, and you end up with 3. There's positive 0 and negative 0. It doesn't make any sense. 0 is just a, it's a neither positive nor negative. So we just call it 0, and when we add 3, we get 3 as an answer. So there's one solution in this case. So we've seen some examples where there are two solutions, some where there are this one where there's one solution, and we saw an example where there are no solutions.